Привіт усім підписникам Київ Дефентерс, а також всім тим, хто вперше з нами на нашому каналі. Ми продовжуємо серію бесід із дуже мужніми, сильними людьми, які стали боронити нашу країну, наближають нас до нашої перемоги. І зараз маємо можливість поспілкуватися з унікальним просто героєм. Це хлопець, який приїхав боронити нашу країну з, з Америки. І зараз ми дізнаємося його історію. І сподіваюся, ви почуєте відповіді на питання, які, очевидно, хотіли би задати нашому гостю. Окей, okay, welcome, Alex. Thank you very much that you decided to protect us, that you decided to change your life, to save our lives. Tell us your story. <laughs> yeah, so um, my name is Alex. So I was uh, essentially living in the United States just doing... So I was in the military from 2007 to 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, I did four deployments to Afghanistan in that time. Uh, I got out and essentially was just living a normal life until mm -hmm. all this happened and I decided to come over here and help. Do you remember that moment when you decided to go to Ukraine? Yes. So I was actually uh, working as a supervisor at, at a manufacturing plant and saw that, you know, I was watching it <clears throat> like building up until February 24th. Mm -hmm. So I was seeing that Russia was putting troops on the border and, you know, people were saying, well, They might invade, they might not. I know the history of Ukraine and this has been happening for hundreds of years. So I kind of figured that, you know, I paid attention in 2014 when they essentially invaded Crimea um, and was paying attention to it pretty much the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, so when it happened this time, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go over and help. So you're an experienced soldier. Yes. And uh, you're a fighter. Yes. It was kind of everything together. Um, you know, knowing the experience that I have and what I can bring over here to help and just kind of train and teach and help, you know, how I can. You know, it wasn't necessary for Russia to, to invade, and they did anyways. So, you know, it's a, it was a very clear sign for me to come over and help how I could. When you came here? Uh, in March. Uh, last year? Yes. Or last year, in yes. March. Wow, it was really quickly a decision. Yes. How did you explain to your relatives and friends uh, why you're going to Ukraine? I mean, I pretty much just told them, you know, this is this is what I'm going to do. We pulled out of Afghanistan and I was wanting to go over there and do contracting work. But, you know, I was working as a supervisor still during that period. And, you know, I didn't do anything at that point. But when I saw Russia invade, I decided to come over here. I contacted guys on Facebook trying to figure out how to get over here and you know they told me get in contact with the legion i did that it was just a very like sp kind of sporadic mm -hmm. thing to to get over here you're talking to guys they're going hey you might end up dying when you come over here i'm like okay this is i guess this is my life now as i understand you have uh, an idea about ukraine before you come here you yes. you, you know something about our sto history yes and you know that it's not a very good history yes. <laughs> especially with the, our neighbor uh, but if, if you have some idea of ukraine maybe what uh, what you expected to see here or maybe you find something you didn't expect to see I, <laughs> i really didn't didn't know um it was very strange You know, coming coming into a place that was actively at war, Russia was, you know, at that point there was no air defense, there was no anything. People were telling me, you know, they were hitting convoys coming in because they knew foreigners were coming in, and you're just like, I have no idea what to expect. So it was it was a very strange thing, but you know, um, being here, just seeing how how the people are, it's it's very amazing. You know, you see. You know, people walking around uh, wearing the Ukrainian flag. People here love their country and they're willing to fight and die for it. It's, it's honestly amazing just seeing, you know, how, how prideful people are being Ukrainian. Did Ukrainian winter surprise you? Yes, it's a lot colder than you think it is. Especially in the field. Yes. Yeah. Not on the street, but yes. on the field. And being from the United States, it's a different cold than I'm used to. How you survive this? <laughs> yeah, uh, being very cold, <laughs> being very cold. <laughs> waiting for the spring. Did you sick? Yes. Not even one time, I think, yeah? Yeah. More than one time. Yeah, <laughs> it, it tends to happen a lot. How you can describe the Ukrainian soldier? 
do they fight in some maybe unexpected way or maybe they behave some somehow different and uh, do you see the difference between Ukrainian between Ukrainian soldier and Russian soldier yes so you know the, Ukraine has a lot of different types of soldiers. They have special, it's, you know, it's kind of built like the, like America. You've got, you know, your territorial defense, which are essentially just normal everyday people that are wanting to fight for their country. They don't have a lot of training, mm -hmm. but they're willing to, to go and fight for, for this country, which is amazing. And then you have your guys that have been fighting for since 2014, learning NATO standards that are very tactical, very smart. Um, the weaponry is that they have is really good um, night vision essentially mm -hmm. they're like a NATO special operations mm -hmm. so yes it's and the difference is is the Ukrainians are fighting for their country it's you know they're fighting for every inch of dirt that they can because it's theirs and the Russians really don't know what they're fighting for mm -hmm. they're just here because they're told to come here they look disappointed yes very their morale is very not good they live in the field. A lot of times they don't have the, the gear that they need to have. So the winners for them are just as bad or worse than, you know, Ukrainians have really good, really good equipment, mm -hmm. you know. So they're able to survive and it be a lot, not easier because nothing here is really easy, especially because it's war, but it's a lot better, you know, fighting for your country and having like moral support from your family here that you can you know guys rotate off of the front come back mm -hmm. see their family it's a really great thing how usually civilians react on you people can kind of tell that I'm not Ukrainian but people show love it's it's an amazing thing to see people really appreciate you know, how they show here. love um I've Honey? been yeah I've been you know in the back of vehicles and people are you know, giving me a heart sign mm -hmm. or giving me candy or you know Slava Ukraine mm -hmm. and it's you know it's really nice people people know that you're here to help and it's a it's a great feeling when people appreciate you for it what's the, the most I don't know cute present did you get from the civilians maybe we've, we've had people like give us food all the time which food. yeah I'm a big boy I like eating so <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty nice and how do you find Ukrainian cuisine uh, I like it I, I I like I like borscht. <laughs> you like borscht. <laughs> I, I do, I do. It depends on who makes it. Mm -hmm. If it's homemade or if it's you know with yeah. the Ukrainian military, it's not as good as as homemade. <laughs> homemade is the best. Homemade is the best. Yes, yes truly. Um, who's waiting for you at home? So I I have a family. I've got you know I've got a son back home. I've got mom, dad. I try not to really call them that much because I'm trying to focus on being mm -hmm. here but I do have a family back home that I miss and how long uh, are you gonna stay here yeah I now it's um, I'm hoping that this is that this is going to be done soon but it's going to be as long as I need to you, you, you know soon it doesn't mean nothing yeah no what what do you mean when you're using this word soon I you know, trying to figure out how fast a war like this is going to be over because I know, you know, in places like Zaporizhia, there's just no, there's no easy solution to it. No NATO country has, has fought something like this. There are minefields that are kilometers deep, you know, hundreds of kilometers wide. They don't understand the extent to how vast that is you can't move guys across it you can't move vehicles across it because there's artillery behind it that's shooting at you and you really can't you can't move and guys mm -hmm. are essentially dying trying to cross over it and it's i don't know i don't think there's there's any country in the world that could that could figure this out the guys are going to continue to fight until they retake all of their land there's no other option for ukrainians and we're going to fight for our land. Yes. Um, can you please uh, describe your uh, the most maybe difficult uh, command task? So it's now it's dealing with essentially artillery. You know, you know, when I was here last year, it was a lot. It was a lot worse. You know, they were shooting 
10 times what you were shooting. So, you know, sitting there in a trench an hour, just boom, boom, boom. That's mm -hmm. kind of how this war is fought. It's a very old school trench artillery war. And that's a very hard war to fight, mm -hmm. especially when everything is mined, you can't move. So it's just guys shooting artillery at each other. It's a very hard, slow fight. It's gonna change, how do you think? I, I hope that once, you know, the first line of defense gets broken through, that it goes very fast. That's what I hope happens, but I don't really know. I hope it is soon, but I'm planning on staying longer than, you know, pretty much as long as it takes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what did you learn about Ukraine uh, for the last uh, 18 months? Maybe you learned something you're going to use in your normal life, something you bring home. <laughs> it's really seeing, seeing the people here and it's, you know, you, you don't even see that back in, in the States anymore. It's people being so patriotic about their country. You know, you see people, everybody's wearing blue and yellow. Mm -hmm. Everybody wears it, you know, wearing rings, clothes, wearing the flag it's it's a really amazing thing if if you know you really can't see that anywhere else in the world besides here now because it is it's a war it's an active invasion that they have done and people have gotten together and you know it's it's a very close-knit country that everyone pretty much loves each other it's an amazing thing to see did you really believe that the russian army is the second army in the world before before yes but you know how, um, you know, the, the oligarchy works. Everyone has to get their cut. Everyone has to get paid. Mm -hmm. So they do that by taking money at every step of the way. So you think that their equipment is top notch, the best, but how does that happen when everyone at every level has to get paid somehow? And they all do it. All their generals do it. You know, everybody in the Russian military does it. They're pretty much taking money at every level, and then that comes out of the equipment that they buy. We were always told that Russia does have this, they have that, but now seeing it in, you know, in real time, they are, it's not. The corruption completely ruined their military and they don't have the equipment that, you know, it doesn't work like they say it works. It, you know, I mean, there, there are really good Russian units out there and they do have really good equipment, but it's not as, much and as good as, as everyone thought it was. How do you think the, uh, the public interest in USA in this case, in this war, degrees? And if it's, it is, how we can influence it? I would think that people, if, if the tables were turned and it was someone invading the United States, I would think people would go, we need help from everywhere. Look, America has we have been the holder of democracy and freedom for for every country for every place and there's right now is not the time to stop this is an active invasion where russia came here raped and murdered women and children they've killed innocent people and that's not something we need to give up on but it looks like the world are tired about this war so is ukraine Yes. But Ukraine can't stop. We can't. But how can we, how how can we, you know, stress the the world? Like, come on! People need to come and go to places like Bucha, mm -hmm. and look. And there's, you know, you drive down the road and you see houses with, you know, a tank has blown a house apart, and there's shrapnel everywhere, and they're they're still there. And, and Bucha is not in a war zone now. It's right outside of Kiev. Yeah. And, you know, they're finding mass graves there, finding you know, hundreds of people that have been murdered and people don't get to see that kind murdered, of stuff. Murdered, raped, mm -hmm. uh, kidnapping. And you're, you're walking down the street and something that's not a war zone and you see just a house blowing apart. Or they hit, they hit a, a, a market and blow a market apart. Why? People don't get to see that every day. They've kind of gotten fatigued from seeing all this, but when you're actually there and you see it all the time, you know, you're seeing houses that are blown apart, shrapnel in it. And, you know, a lot of people have left places like that. A lot of people have been killed in places like that. It's, it's really sad to see. Have you ever seen it before, such a, such a deep, strong uh, war, these murders, rapes? No. And so? 
Why they do? Why? Uh, I, I don't know. You know, there were very small incidences in the United States military where guys did did dumb things and murdered, but everything is held accountable. If you do something like that in the military, you're going to be held accountable. You're going to go to prison for doing that kind of stuff. And for the Russian army, it looks like they're a lot. They are just allowed to do this. Yeah, there's no accountability. There's the structure is wrong. They have no accountability for their actions. And, you know, the Russians really don't care. They they like the tactic because they use it to scare people. Mm -hmm. So they'll rape and murder and no one gets held accountable. Ukraine is having to hold them accountable and put these people's faces out there that rape and murder people. Russia doesn't care. What do you think about Ukrainian volunteers? It's amazing to see that, you know, like like Kiev defenders, you know, you guys are doing everything possible to help get donations, bring vehicles, bring trucks, cars to guys on the front. It's it's an amazing thing to see that even, you know, the people that are back here doing everything that they possibly can to help the guys that are fighting. It's a really amazing thing to see. Could you remember some case when the volunteer volunteers uh, impressed you? <laughs> I mean, it's it's really all the time. Just you know, if we need anything, you know, we talk to you know volunteers here, food, vehicles, anything, and you guys are always okay. Let me see what I can do. It's a very it's a very amazing thing to have somebody like that. What was the faster help you remember? Yeah, it's I mean, really, really getting getting food and getting clothes, getting sleeping bags, stuff like that. I mean, it's it's immediate. If if someone has it, they're they're giving it to us immediately. In the USA, uh, we can say maybe one of the best in the world, uh, the program for reintegration for war uh, veterans. Yes. Uh, what it included? Do you know what, what what is about? Yeah, I mean, a big thing is uh, like mental health. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a it's a big thing, especially, you know, there's going to be a lot of of problems here once once the war is done and, and still now. Post trauma. Yeah. So it's, you know, getting getting support group, um, being able to talk to a, a big thing is being able to talk to therapists, being able to talk to psychologists and kind of figure out, you know, how to work yourself out of mm -hmm. this, because you're going to have you're going to have a lot of soldiers that are done fighting that are still dealing with trauma guys that have lost limbs guys that have been shot so there's going to be a lot of mental health issues once this is done that needs to be a big part mm -hmm. the va helps with that a lot the va really does you know everything you know getting out finding a job finding something to do it, it's it's it has to be an all-inclusive kind of thing you know because if a guy gets out he doesn't have a purpose he doesn't have a job that makes him happy it it spirals out of control very fast mm -hmm. you know you feel like you're not you know because these guys are fighting for their country they're fighting for freedom and they when you get support. out you don't have that same kind of feeling you feel kind of worthless yeah and you know you need a support group that's that's there to to help yeah this is a big do big big business we have to make for for our country to yes. support the veterans uh, especially as you see how many lost their arms feet legs and we need to help them do you have a dream what you're gonna do just right after we i don't know celebrate 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 in which way i have no idea we'll figure it out when we get there <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure independent square is going to be full of everybody mm -hmm. so i'm sure there's going to be a, a big party there when you have a rotation or a vacation right now yes uh where are you going in ukraine have you seen any, any beautiful place in ukraine yeah mostly mostly just being in kiev mostly that's in where kiev. we're kind of stationed out of until we we go where we're supposed to go um but yeah it's kiev is a beautiful city it's beautiful people it's a great place to be i really i really do like it here have you heard that Ukrainian w women are the most beautiful in the yes. world? <laughs> what yes. you gonna s what you say about this? Yes, that's it's true. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's true. Thank you. Yes. Tell me please. Uh, tell me tell me please about your nickname. Yeah. So my nickname is Beef. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't choose it, but who choose it? Uh, the people when I when I first came here last year, because uh -huh. they're like, you know, I hope you're not a fat, out of shape American, and I'm like, no, I'm like. Well, for for 
the people that use the metric system 191 centimeters but i'm six foot three mm -hmm. uh and like 240 pounds so they're like oh well you're, you're beef from now on i was like okay that's so they they wrecked for your shape and yeah <laughs> they're just like you're a big guy so we're gonna call you beef i'm like okay cool thank you very much thank you for supporting us thank you thank you do you have a feeling that to be I mean, Ukrainians are fighting with Russia like for the rest of the world. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's there's no other way about it. Russia doesn't you know they have gotten away with this kind of stuff too many times. Um, and it's you know, if you look at the history of Ukraine, this is not a one time thing for yeah. where 2014 happened or this. No, they've caused mass starvation after World War Two. They've murdered millions of Ukrainians, yes. mass starvation. This has not been a one-time thing. This has been Russia being a bully for, you know, decades of Ukrainian. Yeah. So let's fight them. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, guys. So this is, um, you know, we have Kiev Defenders uh, helping us pretty much with donations and doing everything. Uh, if you guys could help donate, uh, it goes to a great cause. I know pretty much every one of them here, they do an amazing job. Um, the accountability, everything goes to the soldiers, the guys on the front uh, that are fighting. So if you can donate anything, uh, a dollar, you know, any used vehicles, anything you guys have, we would greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Дякуємо Алексу, дякуємо вам, що були з нами. Не забудьте поставити лайк, репост і підписатися на наш канал.